Hi, floppy catters. Quarantine vlog number seven. Quarantine cat vlog, I should say. So today I have the list of questions that you guys have been asking so that I can address while I film my little wonder nuts as they venture out into our backyard. Uh, oh, there you are. I was like, where's the Charlie man? Because this is another weird day where he's not coming. Cha-char, cha-char. All right. Question number one which I don't know if I already addressed, but uh, how does Charlie stay so clean without you bathing him? How do you keep your cat's coats so nice? So Charlie actually has a lot of mats right now. I went away for seven days um, right when his coat was molting, shedding. So uh, I've been slowly working his mats out, which is literally like it's two a day if I can get him because he pretty much hates any comb on him at all or brush. Um, and the equi groomer, which is a brush that he actually doesn't seem to mind, won't get deep enough into the fur to get the mats. Um, so I also use a seam ripper, um, which is a tool used for knitters or crocheters, um, or I think people that work with fabric and stuff, seamstress people. Um, I use that on him, but that always runs the risk of cutting his skin. So that's not good but in general if a cat is healthy and on the right diet they take care of their own coat and you don't need to do anything um other than hopefully groom them hi want to smell my questions yeah hi baby do you have a good nap okay <laughs> all right moving right along I don't know where Chiggy went. Oh, he's over by my trash can. Do you cut the hair on the cat's front legs so their mitts stand out? Or are they just naturally like that? No, I don't cut. I mean, <laughs> yes, I do cut mats out of my cat's hair, but in general, I don't cut. So I think you're talking about like how Trigg's body hair is really um, puffy and then his legs become thinner. That is just his natural coat and that's natural coat in general. Trigg is interested in my trash can because um, there's poop in it. Because yesterday before I mowed the lawn, um, I found two dumps on my lawn. I think they're raccoon dumps but that's why Trigg is smelling and smelling up towards my trash can. It's amazing what they can smell because that poop is in a plastic bag inside that trash can. Um, okay, do they eat wet or dry food? My cats eat mostly wet food. They probably have 90% wet food and 10% dry. And the reason they have 10% dry might be 5% dry is because I give them freeze dried treats. Um, so to me, that's dry food because you're not, they, there's no moisture involved in that. So I count that as dry. And then I've told you, Oh, I lost my balancer. <laughs> um, I've told you guys too, that, um, Charlie gets a tablespoon of dry food in the morning and a tablespoon of dry food at night, which is against everything that I, um, preach and the reason that I did that is because he wasn't eating well Charlie doesn't eat well in the summer um, and so we started that a couple of years ago when my vet was like listen just suck it up and give him some dry food so see if that will um, help his hunger level enough where he'll eat the wet and it did and it worked and so I've kept it going because it's reduced my stress level it's reduced his stress level and um, stress can kill, can cause disease, so that's why I've kept it up. Back to Charlie. How am I doing in the shutdown? So I live in Kansas City. Kansas City has a Missouri side and a Kansas side because the city is 
There's a Kansas City, Missouri. There's a Kansas City, Kansas. There's an Overland Park, Kansas. There's an Olathe, Kansas. So it's a, one big metropolitan area, but it's in two different states. And if you guys follow the news and you know the Kansas governor shut down everything very early, the Missouri governor waited his sweet time to do, do so. So um, what was cool is the three counties that make up the greater Kansas City area, so Jackson County, Missouri, Johnson County, Kansas, and Wyandotte County, Kansas, decided to shut down our city um, very early on, and I hope that that helps um, with the spread of the disease. So, um, I am doing fine. I am actually pretty used to self-quarantining anyway. I'm, I'm very introverted and like to spend time by myself, so that helps. However, this time knowing that it's really, it's still my choice because I'm choosing to stay home, respect others and respect myself. Um, however, also knowing that I like have to stay home for everyone else and for me has made me realize that I do like people more than I thought I did. <laughs> that sounds so horrible. Um, and I do coach, um, field hockey in the fall and I love those girls and I love that whole thing um, being with them in the afternoons and going to our games and all that kind of stuff and so I am worried about that and it not um, ha happen in the fall uh, because again we don't know where this whole thing is going to be in you know a couple of months so or they're saying it might go away for the summer and come back um, so I'm trying not to get too anxious about that kind of stuff and just keep up with floppy cats and also not get too anxious that um, what I've worked very hard for for 12 years won't go down the tubes, meaning floppy cats, because there are no guarantees. I don't have a salary, but I finally was able to go off on my own a couple of years ago. Or, I mean, do floppy cats 100% a couple of years ago, and I'm scared <laughs> that that won't be the case. So um, just trying to keep it all into perspective and not let fear run my life. Are you gonna run up there? You now smell the dumper doos in the trash can like Chiggy. I bet you do. You got a whiff. <laughs> More on the quarantine shutdown. I don't wanna fill my trash can. Um, I forgot about that dumper do until today. Look at that little uh, tail. Oh, can't handle it. So, also, guys, look at the hostas are coming up. Um, and these hostas, too. You can't tell because of all the whirly birds or helicopters or whatever you want to say coming from the maples, but these ones are coming up a little bit slow, more slowly than the, the other ones. Jay! Jay! So the, uh, the next question had to do with um, hand sanitizer when it comes to the quarantine and petting your cats. And I'm really thankful for this question because one of the things that amazes me is how people don't think of what their cats are being exposed to. So I have always, even before this quarantine, come home, when I come home, I wash my hands before I even touch my cats. They both greet me at the door. Well, who knows what he just said. Did you just smell something in your Jacobson organ? Now he held his mouth open a little bit. That's his Jacobson's or organ. And cats have an additional way of smelling that way. And they can retain the memory of the smell that way. Anyway, um, I, my cats greet me at the door. I say verbally hello to them. And then I go straight to my kitchen sink and I wash my hands before I touch them. It's very hard. I mean, I want to touch them. I want to tell them how much I get them and they're so handsome and give them kisses. But um, if I've been out at the store and then I come home and I'm touching them, whatever is all over this then gets all over this. And then that's where they lick and clean themselves. So, of course it's going to be, um, it's exposing them to all of that kind of stuff. So same thing goes with hand sanitizer. You know, it's, 
it's alcohol and chemicals and then it's on your hand and then you're putting it my hands are so dry from all I put three sets of lotion um, on my hands last night to try to make them less dry but it didn't really work um, you're putting it all on their fur and anything that touches a cat's fur they lick off because that's what they do they clean their entire bodies and so you just can't have that exposed. That's like why you don't want to use, you know, detergents and stuff like that when they, if you wash their, um, I was going to say if you wash their bed linens, if you wash their beds and all that kind of stuff, then you have all of that on the bed and then, you know, they get it on their fur. That's why I can't stand dry shampoos. I don't understand how anybody thinks that that is a good idea. I don't know how they ever got on the market. I mean, lots of things that are bad for us are on the market, right? But it drives me absolutely batty that dry shampoos are on the market because the cat just has to lick off all that residue that you sprayed all over them. Gosh. I really, I mean, I get fired up about that kind of stuff. Same with, um, I'm going to go see Chiggy, but same with scented litters where you have, it's artificial chemically produced scent. And then that is all over them as they scratch around the litter box you know the dust and debris of, of all that's flying all over their coat so when they go to clean themselves which they do right when they get out of the litter box then they're inhaling all of that as well as ingesting all of that speaking of inhaling and ingesting this kitty's gonna ingest some some sticks and mud <laughs> which to me is totally fine totally clean um a lot of it will fall off of him actually before he gets to it is what I've experienced but to me that's all okay I know it's all okay because I know where it came from that's why we only go in my backyard my backyard grass looks poor um, right now because I haven't put chemicals on it because that I know they'll be exposed to those when I do the chemicals I put down are only like phosphate and nitrate and all that stuff they're not um like herbicides and pesticides and when I put them down I put it down when it's rained um when it's when the ground is wet and then when it's going to rain again so I really have to watch the weather to do it but it's all for their protection so I think that is it for today because we're already 13 minutes in and this has been a long video so far Love, you want to say goodbye? Well, come here, say bye. That's so nice, wooey. Wooey, that's so nice. He keeps coming to smell the paper because I usually don't have a paper outside with me. Wooing. Okay, say bye. Bye, guys. Have a good day. <laughs>